Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Um, I'm just going to apologize in advance. My throat's a little weird, coming off a cold. Uh, I feel fine, but sound weird, so I might get a lump <clears throat> every now and then. Uh, the benefit of being sick, though, is you're stuck in the house with nothing to do but peruse the internet. And I found some decent chords from one of my favorite Erica Badu songs, The Other Side of the Game. So I figured I'd go over that with you. Um, it's the first chord. It's going to start off with a A flat minor chord, um, but we're going to put it over the flat seven, A flat minor over G flat. So you can kind of think of it as your regular, you know, six string root bar chord, minor chord, and then the minor seven version of it, okay? Uh, and then again, putting it over that G flat. Now, another way you can think of it um, is kind of like a B chord, fifth string root bar chord. Uh, so you're barring strings two, three, and four with your ring finger. And then instead of playing a regular bar chord like that, you would put it over the fifth. Okay. Technically, I think it's an A flat minor seven over G flat, uh, but you can think of it however you want. Um, so that's the first chord. Um, we'll think the song's in three sections. So this is the intro slash chorus. So we'll get to use this part again. Um, you're going to walk down for the next chord. You're going to walk down from the fourth fret on the fifth string into a B9 chord. So B9, um, if you've never made it, middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string, first finger on the first fret of the fourth string, pinky on the third fret of the third string, and ring finger on the second fret of the second string. So very pretty chord, and you should remember it, not only because it's pretty, but we're going to get to use it up a whole step in the uh, verse or the second part, however you want to think of it. Great. So first two chords. Good. Then you're going to play the second fret on the sixth string, open sixth string, and then bar the sixth fret from strings five, four, three, and two. That's called an E flat uh, nine sus four. Okay. Basically, very fancy term just to bar the sixth fret, but that's what it is. Kind of off the. What a sus for that um, that nine chord then you're gonna walk down after that E flat sus nine uh, what <laughs> E flat nine sus four then you're gonna walk down on the sixth string sixth fret fifth fret fourth fret which is going to lead into an A flat major seven chord so this this you can kind of think of it based off of that sixth string root again um, you're gonna kind of make an A minor shape here but with two three and four instead uh, and then put it over the sixth string Okay, if, for those of you who've never made an A flat major seven chord or any sort of major seven chord, six string root bass. Um, one more note in the uh, intro is you're gonna play uh, the fourth fret, C sharp or D flat on the fifth string before going back to the original thing. Uh, the song will start off on a down bass, so like one, two, three. But that part, that whole section is gonna repeat again up until the E flat nine sus four chord. Um, and so the the second time when it comes back around, it's going to be anticipated. So it's going to go four and one, two, three, four. Okay. And so, like I said, you'll, when you come back around, it'll just hold on that E flat nine. So it's four chord before we go into the verse. So here's the intro slash chorus. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two. Second, uh, my apologies. Apparently, I can't count and play at the same time, so it's gonna go uh, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and uh, what is it? And two, and three, four. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, and one. No, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Uh, P.S. There's a chart below to make up for any of my inconsistencies, uh, as well as the voicings and all that stuff. So um, definitely download that below, as well as check out my website, Selfish Pitch. But what are you going to do? Anyway, so we're going to the the, the second section. Uh, you can think of it as kind of like the verse. Um, it's going to start off again with a major nine chord, this time at the fourth fret. So, so just like that second chord we made, but at the fourth fret. 
and that's gonna resolve to A flat major seven, also from the intro, so you already covered that. And then we're gonna make uh, an E major seven chord, but probably not in the usual way that you're used to it. Uh, it's gonna be off the C shape version of it. Um, so if you think about like the C shape from the cage system, um, and then take your middle finger off, okay? So you get a major seven chord. Now, the note that your finger is holding, your pinky finger specifically, uh, on the fifth string is the root. And it kind of gets lost. So it's, it's sort of redundant. So here it is with it, here it is without it. So to me, it's quicker to just grab this. You can kind of think of this as part of like a minor chord, six string root minor chord. You have to mute the fifth string. So I kind of overextend my ring finger to mute that fifth string and then play the whole chord, okay? Um, and then, so that's your E major seven. We'll go into kind of like the very first chord we made. And this is the importance of thinking about chords as triads over bass notes, because depending on what's in the bass, you can completely change it. You're still gonna have that B shape, you know, uh, I'm sorry, A shape making a B chord. So fourth fret, uh, barred at the second, third, and fourth string. Before we had it over F sharp or G flat, however you want to think about it. And but now we're going to put that same triad over A. Okay, completely different sound. Um, <laughs> kind of unresolved, but pretty and really works in context. So here is the verse. You're going to go one and two and three, four, one and two, three and four, and one and two. One and two, three and four and so you do that four times, okay? Then it's gonna go to the verse and or not the verse, C section. I don't, I'm not making babies here, uh, but the C section. I don't know how exactly how you want to think of it. It's kind of that's why I like the song. It's unique. Um, simpler, two chords, A flat major seven and the E major seven that we already learned. Except you're gonna walk up and down between them, so it's gonna go one. Two, three, four, one, and two. And, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the other part. One, two, three, four, one, and two. Can I try that again? Yeah, I'm gonna try that again. I can't stop thinking about the other part now. Uh, one, two, two, three, four, one, and two, and one, two, three, four, one. Why am I spacing out on the rhythm right now? I don't know. You can check the rhythm below, but that's that's a walk down. So you're going fourth fret, third fret, second fret, open six string. Why am I even teaching? What am I even talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, you'll 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 get it. One, two, three, four. I'm not gonna keep putting you through that. That's the second, the third section, the C section. Sorry, apparently my head's in the clouds. Uh, that's the whole song. Um, so depending on you know what part of the song you're coming out of, you might go into um, what you're gonna do. You might go right into I'm not a singer, especially with a cold. Uh, I'm pretty white, so I don't know. I just feel like awkward. Moving on. So those are the three sections to a pretty great song. Um, and now I just wanted to talk about kind of I love I love these the A flat to the E major seven. The chords are pretty far away, you know, harmonically speaking, um, key signatures wise, and they're really fun to solo over especially with pentatonics. Um, so I created a loop earlier. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna talk about it. Uh, I wanna, so the way we're gonna treat them is exactly how they are. So for instance, it starts off with A flat major seven. So I'm gonna play A flat pentatonic, A major, A flat major pentatonics. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with my system, 
which is pretty much everyone because <laughs> uh, you're probably familiar with the, the pentatonic shape. Um, I just probably refer to them in different ways than you're used to hearing. I do them based off of what scale degree is in the bass. Um, so each one of the five pentatonic shapes can be thought of as either major or minor. I'm gonna to refer to them as what the lowest note in the sixth string is, uh, what that scale degree is relative to the chord. So for instance, we're gonna start off with an A flat major chord and I'm gonna start on C, so that's a three. So this is the three scale. Okay, that one's probably the closest lineup for that is when we go to the E chord is to slide up a half step and play the sixth scale. You're probably used to thinking of it as the one, the, you know, you know the go-to pentatonic scale, but those are the ones that are going to line up together. Um, so those are going to sound great together uh, and nothing special about that theoretically speaking um, maybe you're not familiar with lining up two specific positions but i'm sure most of you if you're trying to play the song can figure out what scale to play over um a flat major and e major um, but if not this is what it sounds like Those sound great. Now, uh, another way you can think of it is those pentatonic scales work pretty decent, but uh, both of these are major seven chords and it's good to be able to address the, the major seven in it. And if you do that, so if you think about the major pentatonic scale, um, we'll, we'll start with A flat. Um, a flat has A flat, uh, B flat, uh, C, sorry, I'm spacing out here, E flat and uh, F in it. So A flat, B flat, C, E flat and F, okay? If you lower the root, the A flat, down to a G, that exposes that major seven, right? And then if you reanalyze that, that pentatonic scale, um, you can think of it as kind of like a major pentatonic scale starting off the fifth, or E flat. So you have E flat, G, um, sorry, I skipped over F. E flat, F, G, and then B flat and C, okay? Um, so a nice little trick you know, you can think of it as just just by playing the pentatonic scale, it starts off the fifth scale degree, it'll imply the major seven. So in context, like let's say, I'm only gonna try and do this over the first chord really quick. So again, here's the three scale. Um, and if we lower the, the, the root to the major seven, now all of a sudden we're in six, okay? So I'm gonna play that over the first chord. Um, I'm gonna try and do both scales. So the first time it comes around, no, it's, it's low enough. I'll try and do them both quick. I'll just play the top three strings. So here's the top three strings for the first one. And for moving on to the sixth scale, and the one that starts on the sixth scale degree relative to the sixth string. So it's a very subtle change, but check it out. Wait, so it comes back around here, and now I'm going to do it with a major seven. And so it's it's a nice subtle change, okay? Um, so you can apply that for both. So if I was to line up major seven pentatonics for that, the E, you'd be starting like playing a B major pentatonic. So probably the closest one to that. I'll go to major one, okay? All right, so let's uh, let's give that a go. So again, I'm switching between six and major one. So not the greatest play in the world, but you get the idea of what's going on. Okay. Um, you get nice little changes uh, to general ways of approaching chords, okay? Uh, another great thing, um, you can kind of hear it a little bit, I was doing a little bit, uh, playing intervals with the pentatonics can give you a really cool sound. So for instance, um, 
a pattern that I like a lot is going down in force, then going down to the next note in the scale, and then going up to the one you skipped over. So for instance, here's the top two strings, two notes each on each string. So, so you're kind of going, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a second, about splitting the pentatonic scale up into different um, groups. So for instance, every single pentatonic position, uh, I'll just go back to the major seven, I'm sorry. If you notice, there's two notes on each string. Um, so you can think of, you know, you can think of the bottom half of the scale and the top half of the scale as two things. So for instance, I'm going down the top and then going up the bottom. Okay, so here's what that pattern sounds like. So you get, you get the idea, it sounds cool. Um, and then you can also do the double stop thing. So you're playing two adjacent strings uh, with the notes that are on the bottom of the pentatonic scale with two adjacent strings for the other two notes that are on those same strings. So this is what that sounds like. So you can you can you can really change them up and remember not only so you have patterns but you also have uh, double stop things that you can be doing. And you have it for two different options. So for instance, over the A flat major chord, um, you can apply, again, the regular A flat major pentatonic. Or, or the major seven version, which is the pentatonic starting off the fifth. I uh, hope that helps. Have a lot of fun with that all day, pretty much. Um, a lot of the concepts I realized I kind of breezed through pretty quick. So if you have any questions on um, anything I was talking about, you can always you know inbox me or comment below. Uh, I also wrote a book uh, that explains all this. It's pretty much everything you would need to know, starting from uh, the guy who just learned the you know his first couple bar chords and a couple riffs but has no idea where to put it, gives you all the information you'd ever need to know to be a professional guitar player um, in any genre because it, music is a language and that's what you're doing. So I, my dogs are about to start barking, so I figure I'll cut this short or long, however, wherever we're at right now. Uh, thanks for stopping by and hope to see you again soon.